podcast of Crash Test Diva. I'm your host, Christy Eichers. Today we're going to mix things up a bit. It's not your typical show. One of my dear friends is turning 50, and I thought we would dedicate the whole episode to him. From a ding-dong doozy about him, to a helpful hint from him, we'll celebrate his half-century milestone with all of you. Let's get started. Also, 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 also. Like other episodes, we begin with our segment, Lovingly Called Also. It's a chance for us to share feedback we receive from you and offer clarification for anything from past episodes. First of all, I've heard from many people that they've never listened to a podcast before, and that's okay. Thank you, Tracy Enns, for admitting it publicly on our Facebook page. There is absolutely no shame in being new to the wonderful world of podcasting. I like to think of podcasting as on-demand talk radio in your pocket, ready for you to listen to at any time. There are so many fantastic shows. There are also many podcast listening apps available for you. In the next few weeks, I'll post something on our social media to share my favorite podcasts and my favorite listening apps. We also received some ego biscuits I thought I should pass along. Christy Wodak, who submitted our long-distance serenade in Episode 5, loved John Collins, the Renaissance Rebel. She loved his version of Huey Lewis's Working for a Living. I did, too. My friend Vanessa Hoke texted me to say, this is a quote, OMG, I love the Yiddish Yapper, end quote. She followed that proclamation with the praying hands emoji, which kind of cracked me up. And finally... Many of you wrote to tell me you actually used our links to buy some items Annie suggested for that hard-to-buy-for guy on your holiday gift list. Please keep the feedback coming. It keeps us going. As I mentioned, we are celebrating my dear friend Derek Furley's 50th birthday. Actually, anytime I call him Derek, he cringes. So I'll refer to him as Furls throughout the episode. Okay, truth be told, he refers to me as Ike's. And if he ever calls me by my first name, I cringe. So here's a little history on our friendship. Furls and I have been friends since we were in fifth or sixth grade. We met playing in a three-on-three basketball league. We We must have played against each other. Now remember, I was not good. Derek, on the other hand, was very good. I can only imagine how that matchup worked out. The other night, we were on the phone reminiscing about this. And oh, how I wish I could remember the details. Perhaps I'm going to need to do a little digging and unearth those elementary school diaries to see if there's any mention of this meeting. Back then, it was unusual for boys and girls to be friends, so our friendship defied the norm. While many people romantically linked us, it was never the case. Furls is like a brother to me. In high school, we used to double date. He dated one of my friends, and I dated one of his chums. He graduated a year ahead of me and headed to Northfield, Minnesota to play basketball at St. Olaf. For those of you thinking this might sound familiar, well, if you watch the Golden Girls, Rose, played by Betty White, she often reminisced to her roommates about her hometown, St. Olaf. Okay, so the writers took a little liberty here. St. Olaf is actually the college located in Northfield, Minnesota. Anyway, I digress. A year later, I headed to St. Kate's and St. Paul. After college, Furls moved to the Twin Cities, and I moved down to Orlando to work for Walt Disney World. Now a break from the friendship history lesson for a tip of the day. Now, we still don't have any fancy bumper music for our tip of the day segment, and if you have any ideas for it, let us know. Joining me today for this portion of the show is our reoccurring guest, all the way from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, the man with multiple bounce dryer sheets surrounding him, Mark Howard. Hey, Chris. I- I'd like to correct you, though. I'm in Orlando tonight with my brown- bounce dryer sheets uh, in my shoes in tow, traveling right now. <laughs> well, okay. Okay. Well, we're, we, you have a remote location, well, but you're in Florida nonetheless, like to keep correct? it exciting, yes. Today is all about celebrating Derek Furley and his 50th birthday. Now, one thing our listeners should know about Derek is he's wicked smart. And beyond humble. Would you agree with me? Beyond humble and wicked smart. Agree. Okay. Um, And where he is so knowledgeable is in the world of kinesiology, 
fitness. I always like to I always like to say that uh, that if you've ever watched the movie um, with Amy Schumer, uh, the, the <laughs> yes, yes, I know what you're um, talking about. Um, the character that she falls in love with, the doctor, he's like a spe- I was going to say special needs, but he's not special needs. It's a, it's a, he's like a physical therapist for trainers to the stars. The smart doctor. Train wreck. Train wreck, right? Isn't train, that? Wreck. train wreck. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Thank You're you. Right. Thank you. Okay. So yes, he trains people and he's done tons of research and he said research published and he's going to really hate me for talking about how wicked smart he is, but he is correct. Yeah, he doesn't like you to talk about anything about him because he's that humble. Okay. He's just yeah. the sweetest guy. He's just like you. And so... <laughs> <laughs> humble to a T. <laughs> anyway, um, I believe it was a year ago you needed to tap into that brain of his because you had started working out. Would you like to share your hint that you learned from Derek about a year and a half ago? Yeah, it was about a year and a half ago, and I was just joining Orange Theory Fitness, which is, uh, I'm a freak about it, and I'll be happy to share, you know, things about that on a different episode. Um, But anyway, I was always stretching before I got on the treadmill to start this one-hour excruciating workout, and Furley um, told me that there is proven scientific fact, including a paper that he wrote that I believe was going to be in Men's Health Magazine, or another article he'd done on that that you do not stretch before working out uh, and running. You do stretch afterwards. And it changed my whole workout. I never stretched anymore. And you warm up and stretch as you're starting the actual run and the workout. And that was life-changing for me. So Dr. Furley, thank you from the bottom (laughs) of this much younger man's heart. Oh my God! You, you <laughs> wish you were that much younger than him. Anyway, yeah. um, so you, I just need to clarify this because I'm not quite understanding the hint. So you don't do a pre-stretch. You stretch while you're warming up, or you stretch after the workout. You literally do no stretching before the workout. You come to the gym or wherever you're working out, or if you're going on a run out in the, on the streets, and you just start the workout. It starts with like a four or five minute warm up, but you're running, it's, there's no stretching. Then after the workout, you do a full proper stretch. Now, if that is wrong, I hope Dr. Frilly corrects me, but I'm pretty sure it's correct. Well, thank you so much for sharing that tip of the day, Mark. Your, your tips are always invaluable to our listeners, so I appreciate that, my friend. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> We're gonna change things up for our long distance serenade. I've got a special guest joining me. He's joining us from Florida as well, but he's in Orlando, Florida. Tad Schmitz. Now, I introduced Tad to Derek almost 25 years ago when Derek came to visit. Now, there are two very memorable events on that visit that I thought we should talk about. So, Tad, can you remember both those things? The first one has to do with a a Disney venue. Yes, I remember it well, even though it was 25 years ago. Uh, It was a very memorable experience. You know, we took Furls to um, Disney's Pleasure Island that opened in uh, the late 80s. So it was like a new novelty for all of us. And I'll never forget the look on Furley's face (laughs) walking in uh, to that with all of the the clubs and the... the, um, the lights and of course the women well um, okay so let's just back up so what pleasure island was is people okay. would pay one fee right yes people would pay a fee to go on this island that was full of different nightclubs anything from uh like eight tracks which was a 70s 80s uh dance club there was a comedy warehouse um that did different kind of skits about that were really funny about disney uh, there was a mannequins, which I think we'll have to t- well, <laughs> uh, they talk had, about. Well, that was, that was the dance club with the rotating dance floor. Yes, that was like that techno trance type music that was with the rotating dance floor. And every hour and, on the hour, they would have some scantily clad uh, dancers come out, correct? They did. That's right. And I yes. think Furley thoroughly enjoyed that show. Well, he had the camera flashing quite a bit. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> I remember the camera coming out for when the dancers moved from that stage. Later in the night, they'd move out to, I think they called it the West End, right? Yeah, it's where they, every night, they put on a special show and uh, celebrated like it was New Year's Eve. 
and fireworks, they'd, countdown. They'd count down. They'd count down, right? Yep, count down. So first these dancers, very scantily clad, hot Disney chicks. This was very un-Disney at the time, didn't you think? It was very un-Disney. Yeah, it was it's definitely it, the... Uh, adult version of, of right. Disney. Well, it you was, know, the name, the name Pleasure Island came from Pinocchio, which is where the, you know, they, where the, all the, the, they took the young boys and did the smoke cigars. <laughs> and oh my pull- gosh. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's I, really where. I, okay. <laughs> that's, that's where, that's where Pinocchio and like they took, Yes, it's not funny to say young boys, but that is um, where they corrupted these these young minds to, you know, ditch school and uh, just indulge in pleasures. Um, I didn't you know. know. I learned. Yeah. That's a little Disney history. For those of you who don't know, um, Tad Schmitz is a bit of a Disnoid, I'd like to call he, him. Yes. He, he Disney knows. file, as it is officially oh, called. Is that but, what they call you? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> in any case, thank you for that uh, background. I didn't know that, the naming uh, yes. of that. But every so, night was New Year's Eve, and they'd do every, a countdown, and these girls yep. would come out and dance. And I do remember looking at Derek, and we were pretty close to the stage that night. Mm hmm. And his jaw was like on the ground. <laughs> yes, it, I, I don't think he'd ever been out of Minnesota prior oh, get to that. Out. You are so <laughs> bad. He's gonna kill he, you. He, he, um, he was definitely in awe. And um, I, oh, I remember him you, taking pictures. And I mean, like it was like, how are these pictures going to turn out? But he was taking pictures of the dancers. Do you recall yeah, this? It, yeah, it was like the you know those 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 throwaway Kodak cameras <laughs> that you'd wind up you take you take you take like twenty five <laughs> pictures, and and you know he was not going to miss that moment. He wanted to make sure he captured every one of those dancers. Uh, well, yeah, so that we was up... yeah, that was fun to watch, and I wish we Did could we, get our hands remember... on those pictures. Do you remember if we took him to Adventures Club, which we was took, kind yes. of like a, um, uh, like a British-style Explorers Club, and the women were dressed in these maid outfits? Um, <laughs> well, and... We probably have a picture of him <laughs> with one of them sitting on his lap. Yeah. You know, he, he definitely had saucer eyes that whole evening, I think I, I remember. I, I, I think that's a nice way of putting that. Now, we're going <laughs> we're gonna to save, like, the end of that story to move to another place we took him during his week-long stay with us. It was probably, like, spring break that he came down to visit. And it's another place that no longer exists in Orlando. It was Church Street Station. And do you remember why we went there? Well, Church Street Station was like the main, like the main entertainment district of Orlando, uh, almost before Pleasure Island. But we went there because they had nickel beers. <laughs> um, nickel beers, think about that. They well, give so you a, a what time a of mug. day did what time of day did we do this? It was light out. I know that. So it probably was like an early happy hour, you know, okay. in the summer. And they'd give we, you, I, I didn't drink beer. So what did they, they yeah. gave us a mug? They'd give you a mug and then you would just, it literally was a nickel <laughs> and servers would come around with a tray full of these beers and you'd like toss nickels onto the tray and grab as many of these <laughs> mugs as you wanted. And uh, so <laughs> obviously it was um, a lot of fun. When well, you're, when you're I young. the part I don't remember so much everything about the beer, but I remember that they had dance music, and most of the people were there to drink. But something that people might not know about Furls is that the man loves to dance. Well, yeah, yeah, let, yes, because this is the first time I ever I met Furley, and most men are a little shy to dance. Like even if you've had a few beers, you're really not going to like cut a rug. You're just like, eh, especially at not... about four thirty in the afternoon. Right. <laughs> right. And you're not quite sure whether that's, that's what you want to do until you, you know, so he danced with more gusto and passion <laughs> than I have ever seen a man dance in my life. <laughs> he, he danced so long that Remember how sweaty he was? Oh, I have a picture, and we are going to post the picture in our show notes. But you can you can describe. I mean, oh folks, I, I do have to say he's a good dancer. Okay, he, yeah, is, he is, and to this day, he he's still a good dancer. But he does <laughs> go all out, and that day, you have to remember, there, it, Orlando is a very humid 
humid climate. And so yeah. I, I'm going to let you share what, what we noticed when he left the dance floor. Well, he was completely drenched. Uh, he was, <laughs> he was, he, he was soaking wet. Uh, and I think, I think he, he didn't even realize necessarily what was going around or on around him because it went from like a hundred people on a dance floor to we dragging him off when he was the only one left. Oh, get out of here. I don't remember. <laughs> it was. You look, you go back and look at that picture. There's no one else around but him. <laughs> well, they probably quit serving the nickel beers and he didn't care about them. He was, <laughs> no. all I just remember is I looked at him and, and literally his, his shorts were just drenched. Oh yeah, his shirt, his shorts. You got to post that picture. Yeah, I will. Was... I will. So, so yeah. Furley, yeah, he was very sweaty in Orlando, and so now we're gonna go back to Pleasure Island. Now this took place on two different nights. I'm sure of it. But Most like, yeah, yeah. When they do this countdown to New Year's Eve, they would count down, you know, ten, nine, eight. And then they would start to play this song and everybody and, and everybody left the clubs to come outside to do this. Remember, it was an outdoor stage. And so yeah. everybody came outside and they'd blow these confetti canyons. I think they even had fireworks, didn't they? Yeah, fireworks, confetti. Yeah. And they had a, ba a live band. Yeah, and uh, the dancers were there. Yep. The dancers, yep. And, and then, then you yeah. remember that the well, song. Well, you tell, you tell the song. <laughs> well... And I feel almost embarrassed that I even remember <laughs> the song. That's how often we went to Pleasure Island, right? Well, we had we but, had we had season passes. We had to tell people we had annual passes, so we didn't true. have to pay. We would just that was just like our like playground because we just we'd already paid our fee. Yeah. Okay. Yes, we did. Yeah. We, and we we, and we had to take all our guests to show them a good time to this place. Yeah. So yes. So we, that's that's yeah. why you recall it. We were regulars. Yeah. That's okay. for sure. So, so yeah. So they played that uh, Buster Poindexter song, "Hot Hot Hot." Feel it hot, hot, hot. <laughs> <laughs> you know that I'm already picturing conga lines. With, yes, um, because everybody yeah. would just join and do it, and so, so that's I. That's how we got to this point in the show. This is the long distance serenade, and because Furley was so hot, hot, hot for the dancers, <laughs> and hot, hot, hot on the dance floor, that that is our long distance serenade. Serenade. That is our long distance serenade. We're sending out to him is hot, hot, hot. So this one's for you, Furls. <laughs> Ole, 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 feeling hot, 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 feeling hot, 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 feeling hot, 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 feeling hot, 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 oh, me mind's on fire. Me soul's on fire, feeling hot, hot, hot. Party people, they're all around me, feeling hot, hot, hot. What to do on a night like this? A music sweet, I can't resist. We need a party song, a fundamental charm. So with a rum bum 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 Let me rum bum 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 Ole 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 Feeling hot 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 Oh feeling hot 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 the show we are also mixing things up and combining some segments. It's a three for one. Part taking it for a test drive, part story, part ding dong doozy all rolled into one. Let me continue a little bit with the Furls friendship history lesson. When I moved back from Orlando, Furls and I decided to be roommates and we got this sweet pad on Summit Avenue in St. Paul. I talked about our apartment in episode five. Check it out if you want to hear about my extremely refined decorating style. In one of our first episodes, I referenced hosting some epic parties in my 20s. The vast majority of these took place when Furls and I lived together, and we often had a theme to our parties. One of our favorite soirees was our annual beer tasting party. 
which was ironic since I don't drink beer. Anyway, I think we started doing this because it was a super easy way to do a BYOB party. We would just tell everybody to bring a six pack. Sidebar, even though I don't drink beer, I need to give mad props to our guests. Why? Well, back then, the microbrew craze did not exist. It was a challenge to find a unique beer. And I swear, they all tried to outdo each other. We had many guests transport their specialty beer back for, um, from vacations. Now, this was also back in the day when you could board a plane with more than a 3.4 ounce bottle of liquid. Okay, back to the point. I was definitely the party planner, and Furls had a few party prep responsibilities. For this party, he was responsible for cleaning the bathtub because we would fill it with ice and everyone would put their beer in the tub. I'm interrupting this story for a very pertinent test drive. A few months ago, I was visiting my mother and I was helping her organize some cleaning supplies. I came across this box and it, it looked super old, like she had it lying around forever. I read the label. The heavy duty pumy scouring stick. I was intrigued when I read cleans where cleansers and chemicals fail. And there was an icon for a bathtub. You see, I currently live in a little Cape Cod that was built in 1938. It has the original bathtub, and I have tried everything to get the porcelain clean. Well, Mom had a couple of these boxes laying around, and and I asked if I could try one. I could not believe my eyes. With a little elbow grease... The nasty stains in my bathtub disappeared. Let me describe this product. It, well, it looks like a, a pumice, a pumice, how do you say it? Pumice stone. You know, the one that you would use to rub the dead skin off your feet. It's all natural and it's produced in the United States. They're not very expensive. I've included a link to it in the show notes. You can pick them up at your local hardware store for a few bucks. In addition to removing mineral deposits, rust, and stains from sinks, tubs, and showers, you can use it to clean your grill. Now, I highly recommend you pick up a Pumi and take it for your own test drive. While the packaging is far from impressive, the results are amazing. Okay, back to the story. You see, back in the day, I'm sure Furls would have loved to have a Pumi stick to clean our tub. In the days and hours leading up to the party, I would be beyond stressed and frantically cooking and cleaning to get everything ready. Furrows would normally disappear. He'd go for a long run, have a leisurely coffee at Caribou, and blow in about an hour and a half before the party to clean the bathtub. This drove me slightly nuts. But let's be honest. He was brilliant to escape my hostess heat. In addition to cleaning the tub, he was also in charge of filling it with ice. We interrupt this story so I can share a very recent and pertinent ding-dong doozy. Last spring, Furls came to town for a concert. Sidebar, he now lives in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Anyway, it was the beginning of May, so it was a perfect excuse for me to have a pre-concert Cinco de Mayo fiesta. I invited a few people over, and similar to years gone by, I gave Furls the job to buy the ice. I was cooking throughout the day, and it was a small gathering. I think we ended up having about eight guests. Before the party started, Furls came in with the ice. He had three 20-pound bags of ice. I I just started laughing. Ah, friend, we are not filling the tub for this little soiree. Needless to say, we did not run out of ice. The cervezas and the margaritas were chilled to perfection. Okay, back to the story. Our apartment was on the second level of a brownstone. It was a long, narrow apartment. The back bedroom had this massive double-wide closet, but it also had this door that led outside to the porch. And we were on the second level, so it had steps that led down to the parking lot. Now, while I coveted the closets, for security reasons, I didn't want that door into my bedroom. For other security reasons, I wanted that one allotted parking spot 
in the back. I didn't want to be walking around the neighborhood trying to find a spot late at night. Well, my version of the story is, Furley told me I could have the second closet in his bedroom because he volunteered to take the back bedroom. Um, But his version, well, on move-in day, before he knew it, I filled half the closet with all my clothes. We lived together for over five years. The secret to our successful roommate ship? Well, I'll give Furls all the credit. He had the patience of Job, and he put up with all my shenanigans. Since I parked in that slot in the back lot, I would always walk through his bedroom on my way in each night. It wasn't always early. And on many weekends, I'd have friends in tow for some after-bar festivities. And we would proceed to wake him up so we could tell him all about the wild and fun night we had. I can't imagine that ever got a hold to him. We also had our rituals as roommates. We drank Concha y Toro red wine. It was pretty cheap and it came in this huge bottle. We tuned into NBC every Thursday night to watch ER. And, well, the one I like most, while I did the heavy lifting in terms of the party prep, the ritual that I really liked the most is that the morning after the party, I would wake up and the apartment would be all cleaned up. It would be spotless. It was glorious. That was part of the ritual. I'd plan and do all the prep work for the party And Furley, he'd clean it up. Our friendship is non-traditional. I think it's rare for a guy and a girl to meet in elementary school and maintain a rare friendship for 40 years. While our friendship is a bit atypical, I would say our time as roommates fits the sitcom norm perfectly. Think about these famous roommates. Felix and Oscar. Laverne and Shirley. Joey and Chandler, Will and Grace, and Rhoda and Mary. Okay, well, they weren't really roommates, but, you know, I had to throw them in because of the love for Minnesota. Anyway, think about it. In each case, one of the roommates was a bit more responsible and grounded, while the other was a bit zany and sporadic. I'm sure you figured out which party played which role in our roommateship. But in case you're wondering... I'll tell you about a toga party we hosted. Instead of just wearing a white sheet, I decided our togas should have a theme. This was back in the day when you could actually buy Joe Boxer fabric. So for Furl's toga, I bought this fabric covered in toothbrushes and toothpaste. He was a very dedicated flosser. Usually while we watched Cheers each night, you could find him flossing on the couch. Now, my toga fabric was covered in clocks. I then made us each a name tag for the party. Furl's name tag said, Hygienica, God of Good Gums. My name tag? Tacorus, Goddess of Good Times. All I know is the gods were definitely looking out for me when Furley entered my life. And as they orchestrated our masterful roommate ship, they knew that Furls and Ikes could have had their own sitcom. What do you do That's it for episode six. I know it's been a bit different, but I hope you still enjoyed it. If you did, share it with your friends or leave us a message on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. We have links to all of these social media outlets in the show notes. Who knows? Maybe your comment will be used in our segment also. Mark Howard, thanks for sharing that invaluable health hint you learned from Furls. And Tad, I laughed way too hard reminiscing about Furls' visit to Florida 25 years ago. I'm still looking for that photo of Furls after dancing at Nickel Beer Night. It's rather mysterious. There is a hole in my photo album where it used to reside. Perhaps somebody removed it? Some of you may have seen that we delayed the launch of this week's episode because our Renaissance rapper, I'm sorry, our Renaissance rebel had laryngitis. He was still recovering when he recorded our hot, hot, hot long distance serenade. 
I was impressed. He added some harmonizing tracks. JC, you never cease to amaze me. Finally, I want to I wanna thank Furls for letting us talk about him and dedicating this to his birthday. And I just want to say thanks from the bottom of my heart for being my friend. And I look forward to another 50 years of friendship. Big thanks to Josie Eikers for getting the word out through all our social media channels and updating our website. Please join us for episode seven. While we are still finalizing the show flow, I think we're going to be talking about holiday stress and hosting tips. Warning, especially for Craig Crails, this may be an estrogen high episode. Thanks again for listening. I hope you've been able to escape a little of your own reality and enjoyed the show. If you have a friend you think might like our little variety podcast, please share it with them. And if you're listening on an Apple product, please give us a review on iTunes. Remember, bruises are like life. The harder you get hit, the more colorful and interesting they get.